An architect friend of mine, Greg, was working on a prototype vase, and he wondered if I could help build some of it. Now, the vase is a ring that holds a glass container for the flowers. The ring section frames the flowers, and it hangs on the wall. Now, the ring section is simple, but complicated to make in that it's not a circle, it's an ellipse and the front and back faces aren't parallel. My first thought was to make a round segmented ring and cut the ellipse out of that ring on the CNC machine within the thickness of the ring. So I made a prototype ring and I discovered fairly quickly the problem was gonna be how to hold the ring on the CNC machine while it's being cut because the entire ring on the inside and the outside gets cut and you sort of cut off the part that you're holding, which means that you're not holding the piece anymore. <laughs> so that kind of worked just to use hold downs, but it was tricky. And I had to make the ring fairly big to have enough to hold to, and I had to be really precise about the location of the ring and the CNC machine, so I wouldn't hit my, my hold downs. So I had a better idea at this point. So I started the final ring, or the, the ring out of the material I was going to use, which was beech. I got that ready and cut it into a strip. And got it ready to make segments. Now I was using the, the first version of my wedgie sled at this point. So I, I still didn't have that finalized, but it was working well enough to make the segments. So I could glue the segments together. And I just did a simple 12 segmented ring. And while that dried, I cut out a scrap piece of plywood. And my idea for holding the ring down was to just glue the ring to the piece of plywood and use that like a like a great big tab. <laughs> so I sanded one face of the ring and glued that face down to the scrap piece of plywood mm -hmm. and let that dry overnight. Now I could hold, hold the piece down without worrying about where the hold downs were or whether I was cutting off the part of the piece that was being held and I could just concentrate on the, the two cuts. So I'd cut the outside, and then I would cut the inside, and what's left is the ring in between the two cuts. And I took fairly light passes so I'd get a, a decent surface on the ring. And gluing the piece to a piece of plywood gives me a, a lot of support along the entire circumference of the ring. And it moved a little bit right at the end, <laughs> but that was fine. Didn't hurt anything. Now, the other use for the piece of plywood is that because the front and back face of the ring aren't parallel, I had to cut off a wedge of one of the faces of the ring. So I added a little extra piece to the piece of plywood that would force the ring through the bandsaw at an angle. There was a lot of figuring and measuring and trying to figure out exactly what this cut would be. I had only one chance to do it. <laughs> but because the, the ring doesn't have a whole lot of material, it, it cut pretty easily and it cut nice and straight. I guess my, my first thought too was to do the entire ring on the CNC machine as a 3D model so that the angled surface and the, the curve around the edge and all that would be done on the CNC. But I found Cutting out three-dimensional parts where you're, you're cutting a surface is really slow and you, you don't really get that great of a surface. The thought was to do only the cut of the ellipse on the CNC and do the rest of the shaping in, in more of a traditional manner. If I cut off a piece of plywood, Now I needed every bit of height on the ring, so I actually left a little bit of the ring that hadn't been cut. 
So I had to cut off that part. I started on the bandsaw and I sanded the outer surface and sanded off the little leftover bit from the bandsaw. Then I had to cut out the inner ring and I had to be able to see where that was on the bottom. So I made a little mark where I needed to cut. And I used the jigsaw just to cut off the inner ring. And we're getting pretty close. I can sand the inside of the ring and sand off the little tab left over from the, from the cut. The spindle sander is one of those tools you don't really use all that often, but when you need it, it's really, really helpful. <laughs> and I could sand the, the front and back face. Now there needed to be a rounded over edge on the front and back. So I did that with the shaper. This is where I think my first thought was to do all this with the CNC and have it shape all of this. But I think in the end, this, this gave a better finish and was quicker. And I did some final hand sanding and it was basically done. And I sent it off to my friend Greg and he put it together as a vase. And it turned out really nice. I like the idea that the, the ring frames the flowers. Thanks for watching.